So here's our setup right now. Uh, we're, we've got our function f from x to y, any old function, and a collection of subsets of y. And then we have two objects that we're comparing. One is uh, first take your collection f and generate a sigma algebra of y, then pull that back to get a sigma algebra of x. We now know that that does give us a sigma algebra of x, thanks to um, part one here. Pulling back a sigma algebra gives us a sigma algebra. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is first sort of pull back f, pull back these elements of uh, script f, and then go and generate your sigma algebra as a sigma algebra on x. We want to show that those are the same. Now, uh, you might have expected me to write this as pullback of f, which is I think is perfectly reasonable. If you want to write it that way, I think that's fine. Um, then this, uh, what we're trying to prove looks even nicer. It's that the pullback of the sigma algebra generated by a set equals the sigma algebra generated by the pullback. So we're sort of showing that these, this and this symbol commute in some sense. Um, but I am not using this notation. I'm going to write this out explicitly. Um, my reasoning being that I, uh, I want to only write pullback of something when that something is a sigma algebra. And yeah. So here I'm just pulling back a collection of sets. That's not something I'm going to do so frequently that I need a special notation for it. So let's start with a reminder as to what this notation means. This means, when I say sigma sub x of this, usually we don't write the subscript. I'm just writing it here because it helps us keep track of things. Um, usually when we say sigma of this thing, we're talking about the sigma algebra generated by this thing, meaning, um, so I'll just underline the whole thing, meaning the unique smallest sigma algebra on x that contains the thing in the inside here, the generating collection. So that's that's what this is. And we worked a little bit to prove that uniqueness, right? That took some effort. So um, it is the unique smallest sigma algebra that contains this. Um, and so that means if I show that the left-hand side here is a sigma algebra that contains this thing, um, then I will have one of the containments. So uh, if we can show that the left-hand side there in our goal is some sigma algebra on x that contains that set, the pre-images of the f's, then we will have which containment? Uh, if we can show that this is one of these things, then it'll contain as a subset the smallest such thing. This is the smallest. So we will have uh, sort of this inclusion. It contains as a subset the smallest one. So that's the plan of attack. Um, so let me erase all these comments and just execute the plan. That gives us at least one inclusion. So there are a couple of things to check. First of all, is this a sigma algebra on x? Uh, yes, that's by part one of the very result that we're working on. So uh, part one is the pullback of a sigma algebra is a sigma algebra. Um, and secondly, does it contain So we need to check that it contains as a subset this stuff. So let's argue for that. So let's see. If I take some f 
in there, then can I show that the preimage of f is in here? In order for the preimage of f to be in here, well, uh, what is here? This pullback, this is the collection of preimages of things that are in here, right? So in order for the preimage of f to be in here, it has to be the preimage of something in here. But f is in here, right? The sigma algebra generated by script f contains any contains as a subset script f. So uh, let's start like this. If f is in script f, then definitely it's in the sigma algebra generated by script f, which at least has to contain script f. So since f is in there, the preimage of f is in this, which is the collection of preimages of things in there. So that shows you that um, that this thing here is a subset of this thing here. Okay, great. So then uh, these two points here tell us that the left-hand side of our goal here is a sigma algebra on X that contains this set. Therefore, it contains the smallest such thing. So, therefore, we have this. It contains the smallest one. Great, so that's one of, the t one of the two inclusions we need to prove this equality. Now I'm going to do a similar kind of thing, but to push forwards rather than pullbacks. So uh, instead of focusing on pulling this back, I'm going to focus on um, pushing, pushing this forward. And it's not immediately clear how that will be helpful, but uh, just go with it. Uh, we're going to do something kind of similar to this, and you'll see how it helps at the end. Okay, so I can try to keep everything in view. Let me kind of move this stuff aside. How about I move it below? I'll just move it to the side for now and then bring it back in. So now, uh, now I'm going to focus on pushing forward this, this one. So this is a sigma algebra on x. It is. And so by part two of our theorem, if I push it forward, and I push forward a sigma algebra on x, I get a sigma algebra on y. So by part two, This thing is a sigma algebra on y. Now, what is uh, what is this? This is the smallest sigma algebra on y that contains f. Right, the smallest sigma algebra on y that contains f. This is a sigma algebra on y, and I'm about to show that it contains f. So that will give me some kind of inclusion. So now I'm going to argue it contains f as a subset. So how do I prove f as a subset of this? Well, let's remember what this is. The push forward, this is the collection of things, uh, the collection of subsets of, of y whose preimage is in here, right? Uh, this was the definition. The collection of subsets of y whose preimage in, is in whatever sigma algebra I'm pushing forward. So if I want to show that this script f is a subset of, of this thing, then I have to show that whenever I have some f in script f, that its preimage, I have to show its preimage is in here, right? But its preimage is in 
the collection of things that's generating here. So let me give this its own line. So this is a subset of what it generates. Great, so since this is a sigma algebra on Y that contains F, it must contain the smallest such thing. It must contain this, which is the smallest sigma algebra on Y that contains F. So thus, this sigma algebra on y that contains f contains as a subset the smallest sigma algebra on y that contains f. So now we got another inclusion but of different things. This inclusion involves different things. Um, this was the other, the first inclusion we had when we were applying part one. Um, and now we have this other inclusion but it involves a push forward rather than the pullback. And we want our final result is about pullbacks. So what I'm going to do here is apply a pullback to this inclusion. So I'm going to take this and apply from here. Apply a pullback. Okay, so let me be lazy here, duplicate this, make some space, and pull back, pull back. I can do that, right? This is a sigma algebra on Y. This is a sigma algebra on Y. Pull them both back. And the inclusion is preserved. That's because when I pull back, I'm just taking the collection of pre-images of, of these things. So if everything in here is in there, let me point more clearly, if everything in here is in here, then the pre-image of something in here, which would be an arbitrary element of here, would be the pre-image of something in here, which would be an arbitrary element of, which would be an element of here. Okay, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. The, the inclusion would be preserved. Um, now, what happens if I push forward and then pull back? Do I get back to the original thing? If so, if I can just erase this, then I'm done, because this is the other inclusion, the one I didn't have, to reach my goal. But it doesn't work like that. You can't just erase this. Um, one way to think about it is that um, if you push forward and you pull back, then all the elements of this thing are going to be the result of taking the pre-image under F of some set, right? They're all going to be pre-images under F. And you wouldn't expect this to be required for it. Why, why would this be required to have all of its elements looking like pre-images of F, right? Or if you don't, if you are familiar with the language of fibers, why would you expect everything in here to be a union of fibers of F? Everything in here, on the other hand, has to be a union of fibers of F. But what we do have is at least an inclusion. So while this is not equal to um, the version of it where I erase these, it's a subset. So at least I have this inclusion. And this may be, uh, this could be described as a general principle that in general, if you have any sigma algebra or actually any 
any collection of subsets of x. This should work. If you have any collection of subsets of x, then, you know, if you allow yourself to use this notation, um, then this should be a, at least a subset. If you, uh, yeah, if you take your function f from x to y, and you push forward this thing, and then you pull it back, then that should be uh, a subset of the original thing. So that's something you can prove in general, if you want to. So I'll leave that sort of as an optional exercise. Okay, and I said I wouldn't use the star notation on things that I'm not sure are sigma algebras, but I just did it, so what, whatever. I guess I'm not caring too much. Okay, so now let me put together the results that I've got. So here's a zoomed out version. Let me arrange these kind of vertically here. So I'm including in the recording how I'm rearranging the proof in case you uh, wonder how the board reaches its final state, in case you keep those board images. Okay. So, so far we have gotten this inclusion. Let's call this flower. So that says that the pullback of the sigma algebra generated by f equals the sigma algebra generated by the pullback, or contains the sigma algebra generated by the pullback. And then here's a containment in the other direction. This contains that. So therefore, by using this and what I called flower up there, we are done. Let's just say we reached our goal. Okay, so now we know that if you're interested in pulling back uh, a generating set along a function, then the pullback operation sort of commutes with the operation of generating a sigma algebra. That's, that's really nice. And we're, we're actually about to use it really soon.